Satellite has, in my view, a very important future in the social impact space. We take digital as, as a given, but that's just simply not the case for many people in many parts of the world at many times. In a disaster, you are not connected. In the middle of the sea, you are not connected. You cannot get ocean data um, without satellite connectivity. Inmarsat was founded 40 years ago originally to deliver a particular social service, which was maritime safety and distress. So the idea of satellites being used to address global challenges is not a new one, it's 40 years old. However, now we've seen the world take a focus on sustainable development goals, which puts more of a robust agenda behind a whole set of activities, and satellite has a role to play in, in many of them. In our particular set of projects at the moment, we're focusing on oceans, we're focusing on digital inclusion for healthcare service, and we're focusing on disaster response and humanitarian relief. Philippines has a lot of exposure to what are called rapid onset disasters, uh, weather-related disasters, typhoons, and also earthquakes. When they have a major weather event coming in, a Yolanda Haiyan type incident, the mobile phone networks go off and people are blind. You have islands that are cut off, you have people which are distressed. Information needs to be got out to support the relief effort. People need to be able to call for help. The people who are responding to the incident need data, they need maps and we're enabling that through the introduction of a new ultra-high throughput satellite system called Global Express, which Inmarsat has just launched. In Indonesia, we're dealing with a very interesting issue, which is a digital divide amongst the fisheries community. In a fisheries community, it's very normal to go to sea for six weeks, eight weeks, or months at a time without any connectivity. Now, this is extremely distressing on a personal level, on a social level. You don't get news from home. You're not able to do uh, e-banking. From a professional basis, you're not able to keep up with what the weather is, uh, you're not able to identify where the fish are, and then from a compliance perspective, that's problematic as well. Governments want to track where the fish are, uh, consumers want to know where their fish came from. Was it caught legally? Was it not caught? Telecoms in, in Nigeria are very expensive to deploy. You have difficulties with keeping power to your systems. You have security issues as well. What we're enabling is e-health data and telemedicine information to be um, enabled through a number of clinics in North and South Nigeria. Ultimately, we're looking to enable several applications in these clinics. We're looking to know exactly what's going on there, how many people. We're looking to provide training videos. So we're working in partnership with NGOs who curate content, who provide them to the clinics. And in that way, we're upskilling the officers in charge there. Ultimately, sustainability of these projects is designed by solving the problem in a way which is relevant to the local community. So if we come up with a, a, a solution in fisheries, which is affordable, that deals with the welfare considerations of the fishers, which deals with the traceability, which is interest to consumers, um, which gives the government the assurance and the data that they need, then you're going to have a proposition that creates value, and then that value can be realised on a commercial basis or on a non-commercial basis. And that's the pathway to sustainability, coming up with a product or a solution that people really want and really need and is really useful. Every partnership tells you something new. The key lesson that we've learned is not to make too many assumptions uh, and to enter into the partnership with a genuine spirit of co-design, uh, genuinely trying to build your solution in partnership with the end user. We make sure that we have very, very strong local project managers as well. So co-design, strong managerial process, uh, translation capabilities, they're really the three lessons that we've picked up.